AI technology is about to blow your mind again. In this video, you will see how you can use AI to turn a simple sketch like this into a realistic architecture render in under 30 seconds. All those sleepless nights in architecture school can be forgotten after you have mastered how to use this tool properly. Now, before we get started, there's two tools that you can use to be able to turn a sketch into a render in the best way possible. And the first one is downloading Stable Diffusion and ControlNet onto your computer. Now I'll link below a tutorial that I found very helpful in setting up this process. But the second one doesn't require any downloads, but it is paid and it's not very much. And I'll kind of run through it a little bit, but the website is called Run Diffusion. It gives you the same exact results as Stable Diffusion and ControlNet when you download it. But since it's on a cloud-based server to generate all these options, um, you have to pay for it, but it's not very much. I put $10 in initially and I've only used like $2 after several weeks of using it a lot. So even if it's paid, it's not very much and it works just the same. If you want the best rendering outcomes to turn a sketch into a realistic architecture render, then you must follow these tips to optimize your results. It all starts with the perfect sketch. AI plays an important role on the realism and quality of a render, but many fail to provide a sketch that can easily be interpreted by AI. You need to have a hierarchy of line weights, or at least give the most prominent elements and building outlines a thicker line weight than the rest. If you skip these steps, it'll be hard for the AI to understand the depth and the background of your sketch. If you wanna include trees, people, and objects, you must attempt to draw them at least a little bit. Rough outlines are better than giving a lot of detail. And this gives AI the chance to work with the objects and the form. But by no means do you have to be perfect with this. This is just important because AI sometimes struggles to create objects solely off of a prompt. If you are lacking inspiration, you can always download precedent images and upload them into the direct outcomes of your renders. This is simple and a fast way to get assistance from existing quality renders while also helping the AI understand what you want to achieve. All these previous tips will not matter unless you use the proper settings. So first off in the top left corner where it says Stable Diffusion Checkpoint, you can use Stable Diffusion version 1.5. I definitely recommend going through the different drop down menu options, but the one I found the most realistic is called Realistic Vision version 20. And this has given me the highest quality renders and the best outputs from Sketch to final render. So the next thing you're going to do is go to the control net tab and open that up and there you can see you can upload and import your sketch image. And then once you do that you want to click the enable check mark. This is very important otherwise it won't recognize or use that sketch that you're trying to import. From there you'll go to the drop down menu right below it labeled pre-processor and there's different options that you can select. This is a diagram right here that kind of shows what the different settings show as an import and how the results are affected. And what I found best is using the scribble setting for this specific input. And then to the right of that where it says model, you also want to use the input scribble version 10. And if you're not getting the maximum quality out of your render still, you can adjust the CFG scale slider up a little bit higher. Although this may affect the time, it'll definitely increase the quality of the final image. First thing I'm gonna do is actually test out a couple prompts with the text to image generation without importing any sketches, just to give you an example of what the renders are kind of generating without that additional support of having a reference sketch. You can see that they don't fully come together. They're starting to kind of develop into more realistic houses, forms, and shapes but now I'm gonna import the image and you can see how much of an impact that it has. As long as you put in a good quality image that is well-defined, you can get pretty creative with what you're trying to adjust and input um, with these text prompts because it definitely has a huge impact on that final outcome. And as you can see, sometimes certain aspects of the design aren't as realistic or aren't fully developed. And so you just have to adjust and fine tune that prompt and some of the uh, sample settings to get those best results. A lot of it is trial and error, but then once you figure it out, it's a lot easier and the process is a lot faster. But when you take a step back and look at it, what this is doing compared to the hours that you spend setting up a 3D rendering model, 
This is so much better and saves a lot of time. Not to mention, it's just a great resource for coming up with ideas. And this last render just turned out amazing. And I just want you to see how much detail and realistic capabilities that this has with generating realistic renders. Now we're gonna hop over to doing interior perspectives. This was the image that I used for the interior perspectives. I was too lazy to do a sketch, so I just picked it off of Google, but it works just the same. And so I was trying to do an interior space using an interior design style of a living room with wood floors, contemporary furniture, natural plants, and accents, but also paintings on the wall with natural lighting, kind of like a jungle getaway home vibe. Um, I'm trying to get people sitting on the furniture. It's not quite working, but other than that, I'm pretty blown away with um, the quality of these renders and the outcomes. But it's interesting to see that I'm sticking to a very similar prompt each time. And although the generations are very good every time, they're always different just a little bit. But as you start to get more creative and change things up, that's kind of where the excitement begins. Um, I'm trying to make this more of a beach getaway now, like a bungalow. The outcomes are just as realistic. This one kind of did a different shape and style to the room. Um, because I did a few different adjustments in the settings and prompts, but I went back to what I was doing after a couple of these and I was just really excited and had to come and make a video about it to show you guys what I learned and kind of like how to go through it. So if you found this content very valuable, make sure you subscribe and like this video and I'll leave a couple videos up here that you might enjoy as well. Thank you for watching and welcome to the grind.